Hey everyone, just over a week ago on Saturday the 20th of August, I travelled down to London and met up with a group of fellow booktubers. We then proceeded to have a stroll around London, visiting various bookshops, of course. We also went in a restaurant and had a nice meal, as it was a warm sunny day. One of the shops I was particularly interested in going to was Scoob Books. Scoob Books is a small but really nice used bookstore, which we don't have anywhere where I live personally, which is a shame. I went to Scoob Books last year as well and bought 10 books. This year was a repeat of last year. I bought 10 books. I don't know the plot of any of the 10 books. I bought all 10 of them based solely on the authors themselves. I know who all 10 of the authors are. A couple of them I've read before, most of them I haven't. And I'm quite keen to get to reading and trying most of these authors. I'm fairly confident that I'll enjoy most of the books. Anyway, without further delay, I'll start talking about the books. The first book that I'm going to show you is the only hardback of this haul, and that is The Food of the Gods by H.G. Wells. And yes, this is indeed one of the Yellow Spine SF Masterworks published by Gullens, which I have a great fondness for. The plot of this is Professor Redwood and Mr. Bensington were unprepossessing men leading lives of eminent and studious obscurity, scientists working away from the public gaze. Then they discovered Heraclephobia, I believe you pronounce it, a substance that could nourish our possible Hercules, and became responsible for the most important development in the evolution of man. For they had found the food of the gods, and a new kind of human, intellectually and physically superior, became a wonderful and terrifying possibility. So basically a sort of superhuman uh, sort of evolution of mankind type idea. Hmm, okay, it sounds pretty good to me. However, well, it does have a rather odd way of telling things at times, so this could be really interesting, it could be terrible. The second book is The Gods Themselves by Isaac Asimov. The only Asimovs I've previously read are the Foundation books. I do actually have most of the Robots books unread. This is not related to any of the Foundation or Robots books and I'm always curious as to see what his writing style is like away from those books. And the plot is, in the year 2100, the invention of the electron pump, an apparently inexhaustible supply of free energy, has enabled humanity to break free of the Earth and establish a foothold in the wider solar system. But the electron pump works by exchanging materials with a parallel universe and such imbalancing of the cosmos has consequences. Now the race is on to prevent a vast nuclear explosion in the heart of the sun, and the vaporisation of the earth exactly eight minutes later. So it's uh, an apocalyptic tale when mankind has invented something that will probably kill themselves with, well that sounds kind of familiar frankly, with what we've invented in the world, just on a large scale. Okay, I'm quite interested to get to this one. When? I can't say. Next up is Dying of the Light by George R. R. Martin. And yes, this is indeed a SF masterwork, but it's the final one of this haul. The plot of this is Dirk Talarian has been summoned back to Warlorn, and a lot of he thinks he lost. But Warlorn is a dying world, and Gwen Dalvano is no longer the woman he once knew. She's bound to another man, a barbarian, and needs Dirk's protection. He will do anything to keep her safe, but an impenetrable veil of secrecy surrounds them all, making allies indistinguishable from enemies. In this danger dangerous triangle, one is hurtling towards escape, another towards revenge, and the last toward a brutal, untimely demise. Well, that last bit about a brutal, untimely demise, that definitely sounds like George R. R. Martin, considering he likes murdering off characters constantly in Game of Thrones, which is obviously what he's known for. And actually, this is why I've, this particularly caught my eye, because I want to see what his writing style is like away from that fantasy world. The next seven books are the used books that I bought, and the first of which is Waystation by Clifford Samak. And the plot of this is The Lonely Story of Enoch Wallace. He fought in the American Civil War, and who has ever since has been running a way station for the beings of the galaxy. Earth is a convenient stepping off place for their interstellar journeys. 
In return, Enoch has been granted near immortality. Mankind will be admitted to the Fellowship of the Galaxy if and when he renounces his present barbaric nature. <laughs> so this sounds like it has a little bit of philosophy and a little bit of introspection on mankind and obviously mankind being violent by nature with obviously a little bit of adventure and things thrown in as well. So sounds pretty good actually. So I'm quite happy to get to this. Next up is Jack of Eagles by James Blish. James Blish is a classic science fiction author similar to Simak that I've heard about many times over the years but I've never got around to reading for whatever reason and now I'm going to fix that. The plot of this is Danny Caden has always thought of himself as a normal guy. An ordinary young American with no special talents leading an ordinary uneventful life. Normal that is until he suddenly realises he can see into the future. Right behind him. Before he knows it, Danny has developed a dozen more alarming powers, lost his job, run at foul of the FBI and found himself at the centre of a shattering psychic struggle for the future of humanity. So basically one guy develops a special power and then has an incredibly bad day. Actually about the worst day you could conceivably have. Yeah, it just sounds fun, mad and interesting. So I do. Next up is The Stone That Never Came Down by John Bruner, who is another classic science fiction author. The plot of this is Europe in the 21st century is a stricken continent. Cities crumble with neglect. Governments topple to military coups. Bands of godheads roam the streets armed with plastic crosses. Soon war is bound to break out and then the world will take the final step towards suicide. But one man may just have the answer, VC, a new kind of viral drug which has the power to alter drastically and permanently the human mind. He knows it will prevent man's self-destruction, but is it safe? And does he have the right to take that decision, a decision that will change the destiny of mankind by changing the very nature of man himself? Okay, so this is a big, far-reaching book, or at least it hopes to be, and it's only a small book, as is most of these uh, little used books, so quite an interesting one. Then we have The Wizard of Lynn by A.E. Van Vogt. The plot of this is, the Earth had just suffered an atomic holocaust. Now it had reverted to a strange kind of barbarism where men could build spaceships but could not communicate except by the most primitive of means smoke signals. So it came as a sickening shock for Lord Klein Lin, ruler of Earth, nice simple title, to learn when he captured an alien raider's ship that messages were being sent from Earth to the invader's homeland far across the galaxy. For Lord Klein Lin it meant fighting the invading risk forces at a technological disadvantage without the f help of his fellow Earthmen. Ah. Van Vogt's stunning sequel to Empire of the Atom. I haven't read that book. I've heard of that one, Empire of the Atom, but I haven't read it. That's annoying, that means I now have to wait until I get hold of that book before I can read this one. This one does sound pretty interesting though. Next up is another A.E. Van Vogt, and that is Planets for Sale. The plot of this is... Interstellar Adventurer. A gang of lethal operators plan to smash the mighty business colossus of the Ridge Star's planetary system but they proved no match for the ever alert Arta Blord. Blord, what an awesome surname. Nor does the dreaded Skull, a centuries old telepathic lizard with enormous powers of destruction. That sounds awesome. Not even the Zilf, a deadly race of mutant superhumans, can outmaneuver Blord's brilliant mind. But when a power crazed scientist sees his control of Space Patrol, seriously, what is it with these names? The future security of Ridge Stars is thrown into jeopardy and Arthur Blord, wheeler dealer, genius designer and interstellar adventurer faces the greatest challenge of his sensational career. Okay, I'm quite eager to read this if for no other reason than the names of the things on the back of this book sound kind of ridiculous but also brilliant. So yeah, I'm happy with this one. The penultimate book is yet another A.E. Van Vogt and this time it is The Grip. The plot of this is On the bleakest landscape in the universe, the hunter stalks the hunted, and the scale armoured bloodsucker Grib stalks them both. Five examples of the grandmaster of imaginative fiction writing at the very height of his power. Oh, so it's a short story collection with five stories in it. 
are guided not real as that. It has a very sort of 70s, possibly 60s type cover on it. I'm not sure if it, how well you can see that. And I'm quite happy to get to yet another Van Row. And finally, the last book is Destination Universe, also by A.E. Van Row. There's actually quite a few more Van Row, but some of them were in terrible condition, by the way. So I purposely picked the four that were in pretty decent condition. Anyway, the back of the book says, They hurtled into deep space. Destination Universe. They set out in a rocket ship for Alpha Centaurus, that's familiar, a nearest star neighbour. They had calculated that the journey would take 500 years. What they found there was so unexpected that the most imaginative reader will be a gag at the daring fantasy. Sorry, that just sounds awesome. You know, the most imaginative reader will be a gog. Okay, again, Van Vogue. I like Van Vogue. I've only read one of his books previously, and that was last year, but I thought it was absolutely fantastic, which is why I was happy to buy four more Van Vogue. And Van Vogue has also got an awful lot of books that he wrote, so there'll be a lot more to see in the future. So that's it. Ten science fiction books, all written long before I was born. I'm really going to have to go to London more often because the books I'm finding there have been really interesting so far. Anyway, all my social media links can be found in the description box below as always. If you've read any of these or would like to buddy read any of them with me, then please leave a comment and we can have a discussion and find out, you know, the best time and such. Thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.